ladies and gentlemen, there are a record number of Americans living alone. They said this is the highest it's ever been. So nearly 30% of American households comprise of a single person, a record high. Scholars say living alone is not an attendant so much as a transformation. Across America, much of the world, large number of people are living alone for the first time in recorded history. So this is happening globally. It's a stunning social change. But you know what? I think the things around us kind of make it that way. You know, where social media, you're not doing a lot of face-to-face -face contact with people anymore. You know, back in the day when I grew up, before the internet, we were always face-to-face -face or interacting a lot more socially than they do now. And I really do believe the social changes that have occurred had played a role in this happening. That's just my opinion. So people are noticing this is probably one of the biggest demographic changes in the last century. And most people fail to recognize it or even take it seriously. So the U.S. Census shows that solitude made up 8% of all households in the 1940s. And it doubled to 18% in the 1970s. So by 2022, it hit 29%. So single households, single person households have been going up consistently since 1940. The solo living movement intersects with several other societal trends. Americans are marrying later, if at all. The nation is aging. The national birth rate is falling. People are living longer, or they were until the pandemic. More than anything, perhaps, the rise of the single person household is about women entering the workforce and achieving economic self-sufficiency. The share of adult women participating in the labor force has reached 50% around 1980. Historically speaking, you don't really see people living alone until women have control of their own lives and their own bodies. Does the rising population of solitaires signal a bold new age of independence and self-governance? or the end of human society as we know it. Maybe a little bit of both. Yes, I mean, life has changed a lot even from when I was a child until now. And I'm talking, you know, the technology is probably the biggest change. Solitary living means you get to curate your own life. You decide when to go to sleep, when to get up what and when to eat, what to watch or listen to for entertainment, and how warm or cold you want your place to be. No more fighting over the thermostat. Other researchers see a mark, you know, they, what they're saying is um, some researchers see it as a downside with more and more people living alone especially for older Americans and for people who live outside um, in settled cities, for pretty much everyone who is not alone by choice. Yes, I mean, some people are not. Some people are just widowed. Uh, some people went through divorces. You know, it's for a lot of reasons, or some people just decided they don't want to marry at all. And there are more people making that decision. That's why you don't see as many weddings going on around America anymore. You know, I know I have said this before when I was 
probably in my teens and in my 20s, even when I was a uh, elementary school, I remember seeing weddings every single weekend. You would hear the church bells, you would see the limousines, you would see the wedding parties. Now, when you drive past churches, the same exact churches, they are completely closed and there's no car in the parking lot on a Saturday. Because, you know, Saturday is always the big wedding day. There is nothing there. There is nothing there. Or if you do see cars in the parking lot, it's not for a wedding. You know? And so I definitely see that. So a New York Times report on aging solitaries concluded that while many people in their 50s and 60s thrive solo living, so, you know, a lot of them prefer it, research shows that people aging alone experience worse physical and mental health outcomes and shorter lifespans. Yeah, I mean, that might be true to a certain degree, but, you know, I had an aunt on my father's side. She lived alone, and that woman made it all the way to 90. So that, that might not be the case for everybody. So anyway, the nation's declining birth rate an aging population. Um, it says that America right now don't have enough working age citizens to sustain the national economy or to support the spiraling health care needs of its oldest citizens. The rise of single person households can be seen as both a cause and effect of those challenges. Okay. And, you know, they're saying if people have fewer and fewer children, that means we have fewer people to work and fewer consumers to spend and to pay taxes. That's true. And also, you know, low fertility is a global problem, not just here in America. We know what's going on in America. Indeed, solo households are far more common across much of Europe than the United States. According to the United Nations data, 39% of households in Denmark, 45% in Finland, 42% in Germany, 38% in the Netherlands, and 39% Norway, Sweden, 40% are all single households. Even now, living alone is not quite so common in the United States as data suggests. While nearly 30% of households comprise of single persons, far fewer than 30% of Americans live in them. Roughly 13% of American adults live alone, research shows, breaking down the figures by age group and population solitary rise 4%. Adults between the ages of 18 and 24, 9% between adults 25 to 34. It dips to 8% for 35 to 44, and then it rises 12% for 45 to 54, 17% for 55 to 64, and 26% for people 65 and older. So that's the breakdown. Living alone is much more common in larger cities. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, most of the single people I knew uh, that were living on their own were in the cities. They were in the large city. And, you know, and that's really for conveniency because everything is nearby. Everything's readily available if you need anything. So, uh, Living alone is much more common in larger cities. Singles now make up roughly 40% of households in Atlanta, Seattle, San Francisco, um, Denver, Minneapolis, according to a paper by the British historian Keith Snell. 
half of all of Manhattan dwellings are one person residences. Yeah, but look at how expensive it is to live in Manhattan, especially, you know, when you get midtown, it's just very expensive to live in New York City. And uh, the census tracked there were 94% of households comprised of single persons. Yeah, I mean, in a place like New York, I'm not shocked about that. At younger ages, men outnumber women in one-person households. Young men are far more likely than young women to be single, and they tend to marry later. The gender gap in solitary living closes with age. The retirement years, women are more likely than men to live alone. Yeah, because a lot of those women had husbands that they lost. That's why when they get up in their retirement years and a spouse passes on, you know, many people don't remarry. They just choose to stay single for the rest of their lives. I know um, my grandfather on my mother's side died in his 50s. My grandmother never remarried. Mm -mm, you know, and that happens with a lot of women. So I'm not surprised that, you know, women of retirement age is a lot more of them living alone. Um, that statistic is partly about women outliving husbands. Exactly. That's exactly what I was just saying. And partly about grade divorce, the rising rates of people ages 50 and older dissolving marriages. They call those gray divorces. And that has doubled since 1990. It used to be if people were married for 30 years, they entered their 60s, basically they were going to stay married, but that's really not the case anymore. So men are more likely than women to form a new partnership after the late stage of divorce. Yeah. So both partners typically emerge from marriage into a sharply dismal lifestyle. That's not for everybody, but for some people it is. It's really hard to recover economically from a gray divorce. Couples that spend a lifetime building a nest egg now have to divide it. So you know, so much of the 20th century has seen declining marriages. And that is really the truth. Okay. So y'all, you're going to have to tell me what you think about this video. You know, there are so many changes going on in America. And living alone is far from the only thing that has dramatically changed over the decades in this country. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.